Take one man who thought he'd seen everything. Add a blind alley and a ghost from the past. That's our story. One Way Street, taken from the files of John Steele, adventurer. <laughs> friends. This is John Steele. I wonder how many of you realize what a wonderful thing you've got in your morning newspaper. Oh, I know, it doesn't seem like much. The paper's thin, the ink rubs off in your fingers, you read it once, then throw it away, you wrap the garbage in it, or maybe moth-proof last year's suit with it. But how many other countries in this world would give their right arm to have it? Well, this week's story is about a newspaper man. One of the guys who stay up all night, so you can have the world at your doorstep the next morning. It isn't a big story, it isn't an important story, but it's his story, and I'm proud to bring him to you. Tom DeRubo. Tom? It's funny how a guy can be about his job. Almost like it was a woman, you give it everything you got, heart, soul, blood, sweat, and yeah, even tears, and for a long time it's worth it. And all of a sudden one day you wake up and say, why? You're 35 years old, and what do you got to show for it? Head full of gray hair and a set of nerves that coffee had stopped curing five years ago. Well, that's just about where I was with the morning journal. As a reporter with 15 years under my belt, I'd seen it all. And a couple of chapters that nobody's supposed to see. People were people. I stopped caring. Then one morning I wandered into the office. It was Tuesday. I knew it was Tuesday because it was the second hangover I'd had that week. Good morning, boss. Uh, very funny. Mm, I'm proud of you. Why? It's only 11.30. Now, don't start. Oh, I mean it. Why, only the other day I told Mr. Steele... Julie. I said Tom's never really late. Please. He's got, just running on Pacific Coast time. Julie, I concede you are radiant. You are everything a woman aspires to be. Now, that's nice. Now, where are the aspirin? i got to hang on. <laughs> Go in the office. I'll bring you some in a minute. Yeah. Either kill or cure. What is it? Water, remember? Oh. Well, you certainly can be a bear on occasion. Well, there comes a time in every woman's life. Pills in your mouth. When she sees her man. Water? <clears throat> For the animal he is. Big night, huh? Uh, roughly huge. Date? Hmm? I said, were you alone? Oh, as far as I know. How far might that be? <laughs> That's what I love about you, Dooley. You're so subtle. I'm worried. Why? How long is this going to go on? What? This banging around night after night. Till somebody starts taking an interest in me. Tom. And keeps me off the streets Then I don't start that. Come here, woman. I... You always catch me when I'm feeling maternal. Come on, Dooley. No. We'll leave right now. We'll be in Maryland in three hours. No. Get a justice of the no. peace. no. When we get married, it's going to be in a church with flowers and bridesmaids and everything. And when is that going to be? When you get that ink out of your veins and replace it with some blood. Ah, Dooley, Sometimes look. Sometimes I wonder if you really are a nice guy. Uh, you take it. I wouldn't talk to Hedy Lamar this morning. Mr. DeRubo's office. Uh, uh, yes, we'll wait. Long distance from Hollywood. What? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Just a moment, please. They want you. <clears throat> Hello? Come into my office right away, Tom. I want to see you. Yeah, 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 sure, John. Right away. <laughs> oh, you rat. <laughs> Couldn't resist. You know, it's things like that lead to divorce. <laughs> you mad? The guy said you go along day after day and nothing much right happens, and all of a sudden one day everything gets worse. Women. Morning, Miss Keene. Good morning, John. What's been going on while I've been away? What do you mean? You're supposed to be our top man. And look at the stuff you've been turning out. Here, what? look at this one. War Department makes a statement on flying saucers and you stretch it for half a column. Well, and here's another. Big society murder and you let Hanrahan cover it. Why? What's happened to you, Tom? Oh, I don't know. I guess I need a vacation. No, you don't. Well, I'm tired. I talked to Dooley this morning. I know what's the matter with you. What? You've been all the way around once and it was fun. Now you're seeing everything for the second time and it's worked. Uh... I know what I'm talking about. Unless you get back on the ball, Tom, I'm going to have to do something okay, about it. Okay, okay. Now, I got a job for you. What? Remember Maxie Reinhardt? Well, who doesn't? I want you to find him. 
He's dead. How do you know? Well, nobody's seen him alive for the last two years. Yeah, I know. He's at the bottom of a river somewhere with a nice, neat pair of cement shoes. Maybe. Well, why else would the light heavyweight champion of the world disappear? I don't know. I'd sure like to. Ask him down to the missing persons. They'll tell you how they got him listed. Presume to... I know, I know, I know. Police never found a thing. They didn't find a body either. Ah. The way things are going with the basketball scandal, the DEA's office could use a little help right now. I tell you he's dead. See what you can find out. Huh? Yeah. And let's get back on the ball. Huh, Tom? Oh, sure, sure, boss. There's a name for that kind of treatment in the newspaper trade, but I can't use it here. We'll just call it being given the business. Anytime an editor wants to get rid of somebody, he sends them out on one of those impossible assignments. You can see him coming a mile away. I suppose if I'd been smart, I'd have quit right there, but there's something about being told I'm not good enough that upsets me. Okay, if that's the way Steele wanted to play it, I'd bring him Maxie Reinhardt, cement shoes and all. Dooley and I checked all the regular sources, and then we hopped a cab for Stillman's gym. And the Mark said they hadn't had anyone since then that was anywhere near our size. Dooley. Hmm? You sound like you're buying a suit. Well, that's what the man said. I see. What'd you find out? Uh, not much more than you did. Hmm. He was such a nice man. Who? The one at the morgue. He, he said ordinarily I wouldn't have talked to him, but his partner was out sick today, and he had to have lunch sent in. Please. Who'd you talk to? Uh, Lieutenant Corrigan, the missing person. Oh? What do you mean by that? By what? Oh? Well, the conversation was dragging. Somebody had to say something. Conversation was not dragging. I was merely getting my stomach back to normal. Don't you feel well? Oh, never mind. He's nice. The man at the morgue. No, Lieutenant Corrigan. Oh. There, see, you said it. Dooley, my O was one of comprehension. Your O was one of those obnoxious spurs to conversation that women insert every time a man stops to think. Oh, that's really very good. Thank you. Now, where were we? Uh, you talked to Lieutenant Carrick. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the guy that handled the case when it broke. What'd he say? No, not much. Maxie's hotel reported him missing two days after the Murphy fight. There was a big stink in the papers for a while, but it died down like it always does. Hmm. They never got a lead on it? No. Oh. I kept the case open for six months because of the publicity you got, but nothing came of it. Seems to me I remember something about a fix. Yeah, there was a lot of talk. Nobody ever proved anything, but it didn't smell good. Maxie was a four-to-one favorite, but just before the fight, a lot of -of out-of-town money came in on Murphy, and the odds dropped. Then Maxie won the fight, and everybody stopped talking fix. Did you ever meet him? Maxie? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I met him. What was he like? Oh, he's like a lot, a lot of fighters I've known. Not very smart, a nice guy. I talked to him right after the Jankowski fight in 42. He'd won the title that night. Of course, he was all hopped up about that, but he didn't say much. You know how those guys are. And I guess if I got hit in the head for 15 rounds, I wouldn't have much to say either. Uh, just let us out here. Keep the change, Mac. I've never been in Stillman's gym. Oh, well, you'll love it. Are you sure that women are allowed? Sure. What are we going to see here? Stooley Wilson, if he's around, used to be Maxie's trainer. Stooley? Mm. Is he a pigeon? No, no, no. When he was a kid, he used to pull Jim Corbett's stool out of the ring. The name stuck. Oh. Hey, you have to pay to get in? Uh, we don't. Uh, press. Look at all those men. Dooley. But see. Come on. Oh, look at that one over there. Now, isn't he the cutest thing? Jumping rope. Fills up his legs. Hmm, I'll say. Come on. Oh, there's Wilson. Where? With the guy working the bag. Yeah, that's it, Chet. Now, move it on. Keep your feet walking. No, no, no. Keep off of my heels. Up on the toes, Chet. Up on the toes, Chet. You Stooley Wilson? Yeah, huh? I said, are you... Yeah, yeah, I'm Stooley. I want to talk to you. What about? Uh, um... Huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, Stooley. Meet Dooley. <laughs> Not very good, dear. Uh, uh, how do you do? What about? Maxie Reinhardt. I'm busy. You were his trainer, weren't you? Go away. I got things to do. Weren't you? Mean it. What happened to him, Stooley? That's it, kid. Get that left duck out there. I'm all around. What happened to him? 
What are you, a cop? No, a reporter. I told the cops all I knew two years ago. You were his best friend, weren't you? See them. They'll tell you what I said. When was the last time you heard from him? Be that wise guy. You did hear from him then, huh? Work that while you're hard, kid. Keep driving. Keep driving. How much you right? It's cost Come on, Stooley. You can tell me. See the cops. You're his best friend, aren't you? I... He's dead. How do you know? I know. That's all. That's more than anybody else knows, if it's true. That's true. Maxie Reinhardt's dead. Now, let me alone. That's it, kid. Get the feet working. Off him here, kid. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you ever in a spot where somebody said something and just because he said it so often you stopped believing it? Well, that's the way I felt about Stooley. When we went into Stillman's, I was positive Maxie Reinhardt was dead. When we left, I wasn't so sure. But how do you go about finding a guy that's just evaporated? Where do you look first? That's what Dooley and I were talking about that night at dinner. What makes you think he's still alive? I don't know. Hunch, maybe. Mm, that's not good enough. Why? Go out to Belmont, see 100,000 hunch players. Where'd you get them? Mm, but did you see Stooley's reaction? When I said you're his best friend, aren't you? No. He almost answered me. That's when he started saying Maxie's dead. Well, all right, suppose he is alive. What do we do now? I don't know. Hello, Derubo. Hmm? Mind if I join you? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> you're always so friendly. Uh, what is it, Scalion? You and I only come to see you on business. I haven't got chips to play in your league. Sometimes I think you have. Uh, <coughs> no, Dooley, you don't want to meet this Aww. guy. The name is Scalier. Maybe you know me? No. Uh, Tom and me, we old friends. He's a good guy, Tom. Oh, well, any friend of Tom. You remember Tom. a few years ago, it's very hard to get an apartment? Yeah. At Tom, he fixed a couple of my boys up. <laughs> it's too bad as it thinks he, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy, Tom. Oh. All right, come on, Scalia. Let's get it over with. Well, I thought I'd have a drink with Not you. Not at my table, you don't. Damn. Because I'll throw you out of here so fast. I wouldn't do that. No? The gun in my pocket might go off. Hey, you suppose he means it? Not much point in finding out, I think. <laughs> hey, you know, Miss... Uh... Uh, Dooley. Yeah. Tom and me, we grew up together. Oh? Yeah, yeah, over on the east side. Oh, how nice. Yeah. You know, Tom, he's a good guy. He gets up early every morning, goes to deliver the papers. He makes a lot of money. And me? <laughs> I sit on a corner and pitch pennies with the kids. And one day I says to Tom, I says, Tom, how much money you got in your pocket? He says, I got 75 cents. I look at my pocket, I got $4.30. Now, why is that, I says to Tom. And he says, I don't know. <laughs> and that's funny, huh? What do you want, Scalian? Uh, you know, Mr... Uh, uh, Dooley. Yeah. I says, Tom wants to sell papers, that's good. Scale, you don't mind? Me? I want to pitch pennies, that's good. Tom, he don't mind. <laughs> right? Oh, whatever you say. You see, Tom, she knows what's right. Come on, Scale, what's on your mind? <laughs> I hear you want to buy a fighter. Huh? Yeah. I hear you up at the gym today. So what? I hear you talk to Stooley Wilson. Maybe. I says, Scale, you, Tom must want to buy a fighter. I don't get you. Because I say, Tom, he's a good guy. He's going to let Scalia pitch pennies. Go on. Well, maybe it's an accident. Tom asked about Maxie Reinhardt. He don't really want to know about Maxie. I see. He just wants to buy a fighter. Yeah. And then I say, Scalia, maybe you better be sure. You better go ask Tom. So? You want to forget all about Maxie, huh, Tom? Why? Oh, because Scalia wants to see his old friend sell lots of newspapers. <laughs> that's pretty good, eh? That all? Yeah, that's all. Uh, good night, Miss... Uh... Dooley. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good night, good guy. That night, I lay in my bed trying to make the pieces fall into place. Where did Scalia fit into this picture? He was a big-time gambler. What did he have to do with Maxie? And Stooley, what was his connection? I kept trying to see it from Maxie's point of view. Why should the light heavyweight champion of the world want to get out of town? Unless he was invited out by somebody like Scalia. Well, I must have fallen asleep because at 7 the next morning the phone rang and it was Dooley with her first good idea of the day. I met her at the office at 8 and we went right down to back files. She figured if we read every issue of the week that Maxie disappeared, we might come up with a clue. 
Sounded good when she said it over the phone. But did you ever read a newspaper from front to back page, personals, classifieds, obits, everything? Brother. Yeah, here's a woman right out in the street in her pajamas. Why? Thought she heard a gunshot. Where'd she live? Um... 20th and 2nd. Oh, great. That's only 30 blocks from Maxie's Hotel. Well, you had anything closer? Sure, 10 o'clock this morning. I had I a... know, I know. He thought he heard a fight. Uh, How was he to know somebody left the radio on? It was the same block, anyway. <sighs> oh, my back. Look, what time? 4 o'clock. Do we eat lunch? No, Tin Horn. Why don't you be a good kid and order something? Look, are you always so nice, or is it just because this is our first date? Come here. No. What's the matter? I'm mad. Why? Well, it hasn't been any fun for me today, either. Well, who said it was? Well, you act like it's my fault you're tired. I was only trying to help. Well, I know. Do you know what today is? Your birthday? No. Saturday. Well? Well, other girls go out on dates, have fun. What do I do? Sit in this dirty joint and read last year's news. No, no. I'm tired. Baby. I am. Come here. Uh, <sighs> There. Now you go order us some lunch. Oh. Maybe. You'll never learn. Marge, get me the drugstore, will you? It's really for us anyway, honey, you know. Huh? Well, think what it would mean if we turned up with Maxie Reinhardt. Oh. We could name our ticket on any paper in town, be on the top of the heap. Uh, Sam, just a minute. What do you want, genius? Hmm? Oh, me? Uh, lettuce and tomato white, coffee. Yeah, did you hear that, Sam? No, no, lettuce, tomato, white, and coffee. And I'll have a... Hey, Julie. What? Come here a minute. Cancel the order. Come here. Oh. Come here, come here. Call you back, Sam. What is it? Hey, this? look. Maxie disappeared in the third. Look at this item on the fourth. Okay. Huh. Commuter traffic was held up for an hour last night in the Lincoln Tunnel when an automobile owned by the Mance Drive Your Cell System and driven by A.M. Russo of New York City lost a wheel. No one was injured and traffic was restored to normal as quickly as possible. So? So, A.M. Russo, that mean anything to you? No. Nope. Yink Russo used to be Maxie's second, one of the best in the business. You sure? I think so. Look, what time is it? Uh, 4.10. You go up to sports and see if they got a picture of Yink. I'll meet you downstairs in ten minutes and hurry. We've got to get to the man's office before it closes. <laughs> It was a long shot, but those are the kind of breaks that crack big stories. Maybe he was right, maybe he was wrong, but there's only one way to find out. Dooley met me in five minutes, and we hopped a cab cross town for the man's drive-yourself office. It was on 3rd Avenue, around 25th Street, with a garage downstairs and a reception room and business department, one flight up. When we walked in the room, I had the feeling I wanted to open a window. The dust was thick on everything, and the little guy behind the counter looked like he should have been hung out and aired. A heavy smell of oil drifted up from downstairs. Yes, sir. Can I help you? My name is DeRubo from the Morning Journal. Oh, are you and your wife leaving town? The what? Oh, a honeymoon, eh? Well, now we have a special rate within 200 miles. No, we, we don't want a car. Oh, no? No, I want some information. Oh, well, now, I, I really don't know. Give me the picture, Dooley. Mm -hmm. A picture? Yeah, a picture. Are you from the police? I told you, I'm a reporter. Well, I, I don't know anything about anything. Yeah, but... Whatever they said, it's a lie. I haven't even asked I you yet. I don't care. I just don't care. I get so nervous over here on Thursday. Well, oh, wait a minute. I like it much better when we were up there. Want me to help you? Really, the unsavory people that come in here every day... Getting hysterical, you know? just don't know. I mean, you just don't know. Only the other day, uh, a man uh, was look, there... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I... Yes? What's your name? Why, Osgood. Percival Paul Osgood. I've worked for Mr. Mance for 22 years. I've worked hard, too. Uh, well, Mr. Yes, Osgood... Yes, indeed. Why, I, I, I'm office manager uh, Mr. now. Mr. Osgood... I, I was the one that started the new filing system, you know, but, well, I just don't Look. know anymore. Ever since we moved over here, there isn't a day goes by that someone doesn't do something. Well, that's pretty much the way it is all over. It, what? Ma, uh, well, what are you Now, let do? me... And a Mr. Osgood, look, we're looking for a friend that we haven't seen for a long time. Oh, 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 friend. Oh, well, that's entirely different. Yes, yes, I believe in friendship. Yeah, well, now, we think maybe you can help. A help? Why, yes, indeed. I'd just be glad to help. Oh, women. We think our friend rented a car from you two years ago. Oh, and that it... should be easy to find out, miss. You know, I started a new filing yes, system, I, I, then I, I, I became well, an look, officer. we have a picture of him. Now, maybe that'll help. Uh, a picture? Well, now, just wait till I get my glasses on and we can... Uh... Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, would you turn on that light over there? It does get dark here this time of day. Oh, sure. Uh, thank you. Mm, now, do I or don't I? Ah, na, 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 na. 
Now, th there's something about the chin. No, it's not the chin. It's the eyes. I or is it the nose? You know him or don't you? Well, I really can't be sure. You see, I see so we many We think you rented a car from you on March 3rd, 1949. Oh, well, that should be easy to find. You know, I started the Yeah, I know, the mean. filing system. Yes, yes, well, you wait right here. I'll be right back. Don't go away. What a character. Oh, he's sweet. Sweet filing system. I'll bet you buck right now. All he finds is a last week's ham sandwich. Oh, you're on. Listen to him. Two and over one. One. Oh, March is... Mm. Three and over. Oh, yes, here it is. Well, March 1949. <laughs> Doesn't it? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. Oh, now, let me see. It was the third, wasn't it? That's right. Uh, yes, here we are. Uh, Baker, Fraser, Howard, Russo, Williams. Wait a minute, sir. Mm -hmm. That was it, Russo. Let me see the card. Uh, Russo, uh, the car was rented on March 3rd, 1949, with $5,000 collision. Well, never mind about operate. that. It was driven to South Charleston, Ohio, where it was picked up by our Springfield office on March the 6th, 1949. That's it. Come on, Dooley. Uh, yes, but Thanks, I don't... Thanks, Mr. Oscar. I don't understand. Don't you want to know anything? You weren't very nice. I was in a hurry. Hey, you owe me a buck besides. Huh? Oh, later, later, later. You're going someplace, good guy. What? I thought I told you to uh, listen. Uh, all right, flag that cab, Dulu. We gotta get out of here. There was still a lot of things that hadn't dropped into place, but that hunch was working overtime, and I had the feeling the answers wouldn't be long coming. We left Scaly on the sidewalk and rode uptown to get Dooley's car. And taking turns behind the wheel and stopping only for food and gas, we were in South Charleston by noon the next day. When we showed Yink's picture to the guy in the general store, he said he thought he was living in the old Ramsey place four or five miles out of town. Half hour later, we topped a rise in the road and saw the farm nestling in the valley ahead. When we pulled into the drive, a figure came out of the house and stood on the porch watching us. Then he went back inside and came out a few minutes later with a shotgun in his hand. Get out of here. I want to talk to you, Yink. Beat it. Hey, you better get out this side, baby. Yep. And keep down, just in case. Get out of here, I said. I'm Tom DeRubo from the Morning Journal. Remember me, Yink? Leave us alone. What do you mean, us, Yink? I mean, get out of here. You stay here, baby. All I want to do is talk to you. Go on back to New York. You remember me, Yink? Yeah. Well, put up the gun. That's not going to help. I'll come no closer. I want to talk to you, that's all. So talk. I want to see Maxie. Maxie who? Maxie Reinhardt. He's dead. I don't think he is. He ain't here. I think he is. He ain't here now. Oh, wait. He's dead. No, he isn't, Yink. He's in that house right now. Who squealed? Nobody. How'd you find us? Through the accident in the tunnel. You want to see him? Yeah. Come on. Where is he? Over by the window. And then I Who's he talking to? Nobody. What happened? It was a week before the Murphy fight. For the last couple of years, Maxie's walking Queer Street. I'm after him to get out of the game, but Maxie says no. And one day, Scalia comes up to camp and he says to Maxie, Maxie says I'll make it worth your while to go into the tank with Murphy. And then Maxie ain't never took a dive in his life, but... Uh, me and Stooley, we say, do it, Max. You do it, because maybe you'll lose anyway. And this way, you make enough to get out of the game, and you don't get hurt either. So Max, you tell Scaly, okay. But Max, he's a sweet guy. He don't want to hurt nobody, see? The night before the fight, he starts thinking about all the little guys, what's got their two bucks on them, and he changes his mind. He even tries to tell Scaly, but Scaly says, take a dive or else. So you know what happened. Yeah. He goes in and he wins, but he gets his brain scrambled on it. How bad is he? Don't remember nothing about it. 
What's the doc say? They don't never come back. What about Scalia? Lost his shirt. They come looking for Maxie, but by then we got him out of town. Who's we? Stooley, Mark Ketchell, Al Horst. They all know about it? Sure. Huh. Hey. Is that you, Yank? Yeah, it's me, champ. You want to talk to him? Well, he says, praise your light heart, so Marty. I said, uh, I should bring it up. I no, let's know. leave him alone, huh? Good luck to him. Good fight and good luck. All right. How do you like it out here in the country, Yink? It's okay, I guess. You miss the city? I guess I'm getting used to it. Work on the farm the day, me and the champ play checkers at night. Ain't bad. Did you use a television set? Huh? Yeah. So long, Yink. Take care of him, huh? Yeah. And thanks. Did you see him? Mm hmm. What's the story? There is no story. But scale you. Yeah. They'll get him sometime. They always do. What are you going to tell Mr. Steele? There are other papers. Even other jobs, I guess. Tom. Do you notice the guy that runs the general store in town? No, no. What about him? Stein said he was also justice of the peace. I thought you said you wanted all the trimmings. I'm getting them. Women. <laughs> the title, One Way Street, is the story of a man who learned that the littlest people are often the biggest people. Well, friends, if you like Tom's story, why not come back again next week? I'll have a man who found his happiness was on the grounds he knew best, though his ground was ten stories high. I like to call it dangerous glass. So until next week, this is John Steele saying, a life of adventure is yours for the taking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well, goodbye and good hunting. John Steele Adventurer is produced by Robert Monroe, written and directed by Elliot Drake. John Larkin was heard as Tom... Also in our cast were Mary Kay Wells, Ross Martin, Phil Sterling, and Jack Edwards. John Steele is played by Don Douglas. Musical effects were created by Doc Whipple, and your announcer is Ted Malley. All names and places used in this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to names of actual persons living or dead is coincidental. Remember, next week, Mutual presents Dangerous Glass, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, adventurer. This program came from New York. There's mystery in Mutual's air on Sunday afternoons, too. Mystery from the hard-boiled sleuthing of Martin Kane, Private Eye, to the Western adventure tales on The Roy Rogers Show. For those with a taste for real-life crime drama, there's true detective mysteries, and the shadow brings a strange power to cloud men's minds to the undoing of all criminals. And Nick Carter, master detective, unravels another baffling case to its ultimate solution. You'll agree there's no mystery like Mutual's mystery when you listen to Mutual, the station where you hear the announcer say... This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>